Good evening. Gloucestershire Police have announced that they will start excavation work tomorrow in the search for Mary Bastome, whose disappearance 53 years ago has been linked to the serial killer Fred West. Specialist investigators have discovered six holes in the cellar of the Clean Plate Cafe in Gloucester. On further investigation, grainy pictures of blue material have been taken inside one of the holes. 15-year-old Mary was last seen wearing a blue coat. Police dogs have also indicated that there is something of interest in the gaps which will be explored over the next two weeks. Tonight on this developing story we will be speaking to the lead investigator and the man who claims that he was the last to see Mary Bastholm alive. We'll also be speaking to the country's foremost expert on the life of Fred West but first let's cross live to Gloucester and speak to our reporter Karen Bell who's there for us this evening. Um, Karen it seems the major police work is just about to start there. That's right, Kylie. That police tent has been there for nearly a week now, and I'm sure some people thought it might soon be going. But in fact, today we find the opposite is true, that the really intense excavation work begins tomorrow and could go on for two whole weeks. But hopefully it will give Mary's family a definitive answer about whether she is or is not buried underneath that cafe. Mary Bastholm, the 15-year-old who vanished from a Gloucester bus stop in 1968. Could it be that for 53 years she's lain under the cafe where she worked? The cafe where serial killer Fred West did building repairs in the cellar. Former colleague Dennis says West would easily have been capable of reconfiguring a cellar to suit his own needs. He could do anything in that right line. I mean, they always said um, Fred could dig, dig a ditch faster than anybody. He was so strong. Today, police confirm that there is enough evidence for a full excavation. It's 11 days since they were first called to the Clean Plate Cafe on Southgate Street. An ITV crew filming a documentary on Mary had found possible evidence to suggest a body could be buried in the cellar. They gave police a photo of what appears to be blue material hidden there. Mary Bastone was last seen wearing a blue coat. Specialist teams with sniffer dogs have spent the last week investigating and have found six holes in the structure of the cellar, which will now be explored as part of the investigation. For residents and shopkeepers nearby, it's an eerie, unsettling situation and could soon become even more so. I was washing my dishes this morning and I could hear uh, thumping and knocking and that. And so you put your, your mind in the picture of what's going on in that room, in that, in, in that building. And that, that's a bit of a strange feeling. Two doors down, Taylor Moe has seen his customers fall away as the police investigation continues. All he can do is carry on as best he can. It's feel a bit scary and also feel a bit sad, you know, but um, life need to go on, you know, because we are just working here so we can't stop working or anything yeah, yeah until a few days ago mo hadn't heard of fred west now he's all too aware of just how the serial killer continues to haunt this city a full 26 years after his death Karen Bell reporting there, and we will return to Karen live later in the programme. Well, today, the family of Mary Bastholm gave this statement. They say, we are extremely happy Gloucestershire Constabulary is continuing to try and search for Mary. And this gives us a chance to potentially put her at rest after all these years. They continue, we want to thank everyone who has wished us support through this distressing time. And we're continuing to be in close touch with the investigation team and are being kept up to date with any new developments. Well, the person leading the investigation at the Clean Plate Cafe is Detective Chief Inspector John Turner. And when I interviewed him a little earlier, he told me how he was keeping Mary's family up to date with events. I went and met the family yesterday afternoon and told them exactly what I'm telling you, you now. We agreed. I agreed that we needed to be open and transparent. And I'm confident that when we do leave the basement, we will know one way or another if Mary's there. There have been reports in some newspapers that bones have been found there. You're saying that's not the case? That is unfactual, unhelpful, and I think quite distressing to, to the, the, the family. That is just not true. Excavation starts on Wednesday, which is tomorrow. You have had the evidence from a documentary team. You've carried out your own archaeology investigations. You've done some preliminary work there. 
you're now going to excavate six voids in the building. Like you say, you want to come away from that building knowing for certain, but you must be relatively confident of finding something of interest to scale up the investigation. Honestly, I don't know what I'm going to find in the basement, purely be because of the conflicting theories and information that's going back from 1994. I've looked at that information and without the information from the production co company, I genuinely believe there wouldn't have been the justification to look in, in the basement because there are other places around the, the, the country that Fred has indicated he's buried people. Um, and we do know from the inter interviewing officers at the time that Fred lied to the police on numerous occasions, which has made this very, very difficult. With Fred taking his own life, he's the only one who really knows. Will you speak to Rose West? We may speak to Rose West, depending on what we find within the basement. There will be some people in Gloucester who have been talk to, talking about that cafe for a number of years. They, they will potentially ask why it took a documentary team, an independent documentary team, and not Gloucestershire Police to discover that evidence when that cafe has been mentioned. And Gloucestershire Police has previously said there hasn't been enough evidence. The position the uh, police are, are in, we have to work on intelligence and evidence, not rumour gossip and, and, and conspiracy th theories. You know, we're making a, a decision. We have to get a warrant from court in order to get the legal justification in order to start digging up somebody's property. We just can't, can't d do that without the evidence and the fact. And the information that we presented with the production company was the justification that required in order for us to excavate the building. What would it mean to solve the disappearance of Mary Bassholm? This is... Um, an investigation of theory that's been going on for, for far too long and you know the family haven't been, been able to get over this and past this i've got now the, the opportunity for once and for all to tell the family what is or isn't in that basement and the family are prepared for the fact that we may not find anything within the, within the basement the fact of the matter is in the search for the truth we need to look detective chief inspector john turner thank you thank you well, the man who claims he was the last person to see Mary Bastholm alive says he felt ignored by the police when he tried to give them evidence. Former journalist Alan Watkins says he saw her at a bus stop in Gloucester before a van pulled up and she was never seen again. As Ken Goodwin now reports. For more than half a century, Mary Bastholm's disappearance has been a mystery. How could a young woman simply vanish from the bus stop where she was waiting to go and visit her boyfriend? I think she took a lift from someone she knew. can't imagine that she ran away, but um, what can you say? I would hate to think that I was the last person to see her alive. Now this former Gloucester journalist says his account of being potentially the last eyewitness to see her alive and giving the police details of the make and model of a van he saw was ignored by the police back in 1968 when the investigation into her disappearance started. And whilst I was waiting for the bus, um, I noticed a, a young woman, a girl, uh, stood on the other side at the other bus stop. A, a van, a grey van, pulled up and somebody talked to the girl. And then the next thing, I, I looked back over, the van had gone and so had the girl. Um, there was a press conference, as there always was, first thing in the morning, at the police station, and this case came up. And I waited until everybody else had gone and then had a word with the inspector who was in charge of the thing and told him what I'd seen. And he said, oh, that's very interesting. And that, believe it or not, was the last thing that I, I heard about it. Never had an approach from the police from that day to this. Mary's mother, father and brother died, never knowing what happened to her. There have been many theories, mostly connected with the Fred West inquiry. He knew her and in the 1960s was a frequent customer at the Pop-In Cafe in Southgate Street, where she worked. Back in 1995, a former owner of the building dug a hole himself, convinced Mary was bricked up behind the wall in the basement. A diary was found in the cellar with the crossed out name of Fred in it, though this was later shown not to have belonged to Mary. And as for Alan, he hopes her remains are discovered, even if only to bring peace and closure to her family. 
that's what I, I've always wanted. Um, they, they, they were a lovely family. Alan Watkins ending that report by Ken Goodwin there. There is more coverage of the investigation at the Clean Plate Cafe on our website for you this evening, including footage from the archives explaining the circumstances surrounding Mary Bastone's disappearance and her father's belief that she accepted a lift from someone she knew from her job at the cafe. Now, Jeffrey, Wons Jeffrey Wonsall is considered to be the foremost expert on serial killer Fred West. In writing his book, he was given access to 100 hours of taped recordings of West and his self-penned autobiography. I spoke to him earlier. Jeffrey, thank you very much for speaking to me. What went through your mind when you heard that police were carrying out the investigations into the basement? I always believed that uh, Frederick West had other victims. And the most significant of the other victims was, of course, poor 15-year-old Mary Bastone, who dis disappeared on the 6th of January 1968 at a bus stop. Now, I don't know, although I can fervently hope, that her remains are finally found. Her family have suffered for 53 years. Her parents died, sadly. There are siblings left. West would always have wanted to keep a secret or secrets about where his other victims were, because that's one of the great characteristics of serial killers. They hide the, the bodies because that's their last bit of power and control. What is it about Mary's disappearance that leads you to believe that she was killed by Fred West? Well, she was exactly West's... Um, archetypal victim. She was what he would have called a tasty morsel. She was young, she was innocent, she was naive. West had that kind of appetite. Do you believe there's anyone alive today who knows what happened to Mary? Well, the obvious person is Rosemary West. The honest answer to that question is, even if Rosemary knows, she ain't going to tell anybody. For your book, you had unparalleled access to Fred West's taped confessions and self-penned autobiography. What was Fred West like, in your opinion? Fred West was uh, an extraordinary man. He was hiding in plain sight and hid in plain sight throughout a very, very long career of killing. He was someone you would not see as having a tail and horns and a, wearing a black cloak. Do you have any thoughts or ideas of how many other victims there maybe are out there? We can't be sure, but I have never doubted, never, ever doubted, that he committed many more crimes, many more killings than he was convicted for, than, than Rosemary was convicted for. Fred, of course, was not convicted of anything because he committed suicide before he got to trial. Mm, and, of course, he, he died without revealing any, any more of that information. Do you think that there are some families out there who, who will never get closure from this? I'm absolutely certain of it. The trouble is we don't know which families. The only family we know for certain is Mary Bastons. But I am absolutely convinced that other girls from other parts of the country fell victim to West. He was a genuinely evil, depraved man. That was Geoffrey Wonsall speaking to me earlier.